Nerds, what is up? It is so good to see you again. My name is Nate in the Wild. Thank you for coming back. Uh, right now, we're actually not in the wild. We are back in the studio. A couple weeks ago, I uploaded a video that was the basics of astrophotography. Uh, it was very well received. You guys were very excited about it, and I love that. But one of the tips was that you should shoot in RAW. Um, the photos just aren't gonna be as good if you shoot in JPEG, you should shoot in RAW, but then that mandates that you have to do a little bit of editing in the studio, and that was a little bit overwhelming. I got a lot of comments, a lot of feedback from people that said they wanted to see more information about how to edit astrophotos. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's get into it. So I loaded it, I imported it into Lightroom, I hit the D key to bring up the develop module. Everything's looking pretty good now. Uh, I always will just start off by adjusting my shadows and my highlights and my exposure. That's always my first step for every single photo. This one's gonna be a little bit different because it's an astro photo, so the first step you're technically supposed to do before you do edits is to denoise. You can do this with, uh, there's a ton of different options. You can use Topaz. Uh, I'm just gonna use the built-in Lightroom denoise. You just click the button, it processes a little bit pretty quick, and then it makes a DNG. Um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just gonna make the finished image look a little bit cleaner. Uh, I'm not gonna change any of the settings. We're trying to keep this straightforward. You just click go for it. It's gonna start thinking up here in the upper left corner. Wait for that to finish processing, and the image will look exactly the same right now, but I promise you, in the long run, this will be worth it. Okay, so it spit out a new image for us. It looks the exact same as the other one, just like I said, but there is less noise in the shadow, so once we dive into editing, it is going to look better. So, as I said, start by lifting your shadows. Um, I wanna see the detail in the front. I know that looks insane that I just lifted it 90 points. We're just getting started. We're gonna fine tune some stuff. Um, highlights down, I don't do too much of this because the stars are technically highlights, so keep it reasonable, but just a little bit. And then I am gonna bring the exposure up a tad as well, bring back a little bit of contrast, small adjustments. We're just getting started. I will say, if you're new to editing, it's awesome to play with the sliders and see what happens. You can always control Z that sucker out of here. You can get rid of it, you can undo it, but it's great. Like I moved the, the contrast slider 10 points and you might be thinking, boy, I can't really see a whole lot of change between those two. That's because I've edited 10,000 photos in my career, I know what I'm doing here. But if you can't see the difference, that's so okay. Crank it to 100 and say, wow, that looks crazy, but now I know what this slider does. Uh, this is super important for things like clarity or dehaze. Like a little bit of dehaze, like 30 or 40 looks cool, 100 looks horrible, but it's nice to get a feel for what does what and how far you can take it before it starts to get crazy. So anyhow, I'm gonna put the contrast up to like plus 20 or so. Um, and then uh, I will always start by adding a little bit of color back. I strongly prefer vibrance over saturation just as a general statement, um, but colors are awesome. And so I'm going to be a little bit heavy handed to get started. now. I think this white balance looks a little bit too blue. You can see I shot it at 3,500. I don't know, I was maybe messing around a little bit, but let's warm it up a tad, not too much. I'm gonna get it closer to about the 4,000 that I suggested in the last video. I might keep it a little bit cooler. And so in the last video I suggested shooting at about 4,000 Kelvin. And that is a good starting point. Now you'll see here that I pushed it a little bit bluer, and part of that is because Mount Rainier is close to the city of Seattle. It's close enough that you actually get city lights reflecting off the snow, and city lights tend to be kind of a warmer yellow color. So to the naked eye, the mountain sort of looks like this a little bit when you're out there in the field. So I shot this a little bit cooler than I usually would, and I'm going to continue to edit it a little bit cooler because I want more of a nice, neutral white on the snow and the stars rather than a super kind of weird, muddy looking yellowish brown. So that's my thought process there. I'm gonna leave it a little bit cooler because for me, nighttime is sort of blue. I like that tone. This is an art form and so you are fully allowed to disagree with me and explore, find your own colors, your tones that you like uh, within reason. If you start you know, publishing Milky Way photos where everything's neon magenta, 
you're probably gonna get made fun of online, but that's just the way it goes. Someone's probably gonna make fun of me in the comments of this video. So welcome to the internet, my friends. Okay, so we adjusted the shadows, the highlights a little bit. Uh, I am going to adjust the blacks and the whites, but we're gonna get there later. I added a little vibrance, a little saturation. Now let's start doing some clarity and some dehaze. You're gonna wanna be subtle with these, but they are such cool tools to have in your arsenal. Clarity specifically, I'm gonna crank it all the way so we can see what it looks like. Now pay attention, the stars look awesome. The foreground looks so bizarre. It's kind of a, a little bit of a hit and a miss slider, and so I'm going to leave that adjustment until we start doing a little bit of masking. Same thing with dehaze. I love the way dehaze looks, but if you go too far, it starts to look gross. And you'll see that it really crushes all of your foreground detail, which for me is a huge loss because in this location specifically, that foreground is what dreams are made of. So let's mask that sky out. You used to have to do this manually with a brush, um, either in Lightroom or Photoshop, we live in the golden age of photography right now, and so you can just say sky. You just click the brush in the upper right, and then you click the sky button, and away it goes. Now you'll see that it did kind of a mediocre job. That's okay. Those adjustments might look kind of nice, and part of the reason that it does that, so I'll, I'll remove a little bit of it here from the foreground. I'll take some off the mountain. If it left just the ridge line, or even worse, it didn't quite get it down to the sky, then you're left with a halo around your subject. And that is one of the like signatures of amateur editing. You'll see it a lot. Now that I've mentioned it in this video, you're gonna to start to notice it way more and it's probably gonna ruin some of your favorite photographers work for you, unfortunately. Uh, it, it is a thing to look out for. If you have a horrible halo around a subject, it's the mark of somebody who didn't take the time to properly mask out a sky or a foreground. Um, it doesn't mean that they put a fake sky in, it's just selective editing, and perhaps they did it kind of fast and kind of lazy. So, we have the sky masked out thanks to Adobe's, uh, you know, I guess, is that AI? Is that technically AI? Anyhow, they're smart subject detect. So now I'm gonna put some clarity in, and you'll see now we get that detail in the sky without affecting the foreground. And so now we're gonna add a little bit of dehaze as well. And you'll see that one is nice, but again, within reason, gosh, that gets weird so fast. So I'm gonna keep it at like 10 to 15, just a little bit, enough to like give it some punch, but we're not trying to get crazy. Um, I do feel like that darkened the sky up a little bit. So I'm gonna go out of this mask, back to the regular image, and I'm gonna just brighten everything up again. This is good because we wanted to get a little bit more brightness in the foreground. I want to see a little more detail there without it looking unrealistic. This is still nighttime. So these dark areas down here, that's good. It's supposed to be dark. It's literally nighttime. Uh, if you brighten this up so that it looks like daytime, first of all, it's going to be very noisy and look gross. But also that just is silly. It's not how it looks to the naked eye. It's not how anybody will interpret it. So don't be afraid of some parts staying black. Uh, darkness in the foreground is not inherently bad. Just keep it within reason. I like to see a little bit of detail. I like to see what I'm looking at without having it be truly outrageous. Oh, and by the way, if you've been watching this and you've been wondering what these dots are on the mountain, those are climbers. They start climbing at around midnight because the ice is harder and it's safer from an avalanche risk. Uh, and also storms tend to blow in in the afternoon. So the climbers will, will take off around midnight and they will be doing their summit push. So you can see that's the disappointment cleaver there. Camp Muir is right about there. Uh, and then these people are going up the Emmons Glacier to try and reach the summit. So hopefully they all succeeded, good for them. Okay, I'm going to adjust the tint. Uh, when I zoomed in on this foreground, I realized everything was looking a little bit green for my liking. Um, I do love the magentas in the sky. Like, look at that, I pushed it just, you know, what, 15 points and already to me this is looking so much better. Um, I think let's go back to our sky mask and I am going to give it a little bit more color, a little bit more contrast. And this is where I'm going to lift the whites and I'm gonna darken the blacks. So we're bringing that contrast back into this sky. And so just really quick, the backslash key on your computer 
will let you preview where you started from and where you are. And it's really cool as you're making these small adjustments, sometimes you'll kind of lose track of where you are. And that's a really fun way to kind of see how much change has already happened. Now, I don't do this with every lens, but this one specifically, I shot this on a 14 millimeter, and I think there's a pretty heavy vignette in the corners. And so I'm going to go down here to the lens corrections and I'm gonna click enable profile corrections and it's going to immediately get rid of that vignette. I personally think Lightroom is way too heavy handed on this. I think it overcompensates. And so I'm actually going to restore some of the vignette. I know this is like, that's the silliest thing to do, but I like some vignette. I just don't like a ton of vignette. I definitely don't like zero vignette. So. I got rid of all of it and then I brought back half of it. So again, if you just undo it, this is where we started and that's where we're at. It's an improvement without being a little bit crazy. Overall, honestly, I think this is looking really good. It's really nice and clean. Oh my God, look, there's an avalanche happening as I took this photo. No way. That's so cool, look at that, that glacier collapsed. Well, so much for those climbers going up in the middle of the night for safety, huh? That looks like a Serac collapsed. That is so cool. Okay, sorry, sidetracked. The main thing here is I feel like the sky is lacking a little bit of punch. And so we're gonna go in, we're just gonna start doing some real selective editing. And this is where it actually gets fun. So I'm gonna click the circle in the top right here. That's your, your masking, your brushes, etc. And I'm going to click plus, and then I'm just gonna do a brush. Now I do auto mask, your mileage may vary, but let's just stick with me here, auto mask. And I'm just going to, I'm gonna lower my shadows. Again, seems weird, I've lifted my shadows like four times already, stick with me. I'm gonna do my shadows down, my blacks down. That's probably gonna be a little heavy handed, but just so we can see what we're doing. Then I'm gonna zoom in so I've got some fine control over where we're brushing. And this dark core spot of the, the core of the Milky Way, I want to bring that out. So I have auto mask on, so that if I get out of the lines and I go over this bright cluster of stars, Lightroom will detect that happening and it will actually assist me a little bit and it will mask the brush for me. So I can leave it as a pretty big brush with a lot of feathering so that I can just brush it in where I want it and Lightroom is gonna help me bring out those details. Now, you are going to want to adjust this a little bit after the fact. Like that is, ugh, that's a little bit much. I'm gonna bring my flow down, my density down just a tad. As we get further from the core, you want that to be a little bit less intense, but I still want it, right? Like these darks over here are gonna look cool. It's gonna look better if those have a little bit more punch and so we're gonna and we're gonna take that out like I want all of these dark areas to get that contrast boost all right it looks it does look a little bit heavy-handed right don't worry we're getting there uh, up here there's a little bit less going on and so you can just get a little bit bigger with it and we're going kind of quick but it's looking pretty good okay so I think this looks a little bit silly in here so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring back a little bit of that that contrast. And also it's worth mentioning, if you ever uh, make a big mistake, like say that you're here and then, oops, oh no, I drew way too much. If you hold the option key on Mac, then you can just erase anything that you drew. It's super easy. It turns your brush into a remove brush and you can just erase. So you can really fine tune this. You also have the control Z, command Z option, but I do like being able to hit option to just erase a certain portion of my brush and really fine tune it. Um, that's option on Mac. If you have a Windows computer, I think it's just go to the Apple store and buy a Mac is the easiest option for that. Okay, so I'm gonna make a new brush. Same thing, click the circle, click the plus sign, click the brush, exact same method as before, except now I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm lifting the whites, I'm lifting the highlights. You're probably getting ahead of me. You know where I'm going with this. We're gonna brush the exact opposite portion of that Milky Way. The stars part, the stars are what we're all here for. Now I'm going kind of quick here because I don't really want to upload a 30 minute video to YouTube, trying to keep this digestible and fast. 
If this is a photo that you're proud of, if you have an exposure on your camera and you're thinking, hot damn, that is beautiful, take your time. I've spent an hour editing a photo before, many times if it's something you're proud of. Don't be shy about going hard to make something look good. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go take it all the way to the top here. And then I'm gonna switch back to my uh, dark brush. And I'm gonna bring a little bit more of the contrast down here. All right, let's zoom back out a little bit. Okay, so now that we've brushed in the highlights and the shadows of the Milky Way, I'm gonna go back to that global sky adjustment. I'm gonna push more saturation. I want this across the sky, and I'm gonna adjust my white balance. This looks very heavy on the blue and very heavy on the green still. And that'll happen a lot. This You'll see this kind of green on the horizon. It's called sky glow. It's very natural, it's very real. I'm gonna compensate for that a little bit. I love like a nice kind of a purpley Milky Way sky. I don't know why, it just gets me so excited. So just some small adjustment on that white balance, but I think that sky is looking awesome. Uh, so let's look at this again really quick. That's where we started. Here's where we're at now. That's not a crazy amount of work that I had to do here, but we brought a really a nice neutral exposure into a beautiful astrophoto. Now, I think that those Milky Way clouds, or not the clouds, the star clusters are looking a little bit too distinct. And so I'm going to, I'm actually gonna be sloppier with my brush. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna kinda expand that so that the cloud situation looks good. You want it to look a little bit more global so it's like nice stars rather than just like fake blobs, if that makes sense. Oops. All right, and then the final step is, uh, I just like to check it again. I hit the slash key to see where we started from and where we're at now. And I, I think that looks great. We started with a nice neutral exposure, um, but it's raw, it's a raw image. So it looks kind of flat. Just a couple minutes of editing, couple brushes, nothing super fancy. This is a nice looking photo that I would be happy to share. Um, and, and I think it's looking pretty good. Let me know in the comments below if you have any secret tips or tricks that you'd like me to check out. I'm gonna do another one of these with some really more fancy in-depth editing. Uh, and I'd love to hear your feedback. Let me know what you think. Until next time, stay nerdy.